Are ETFs a scam? Is it that easy to make money from it? Can you really just investing in ETFs with absolutely zero investment knowledge? Well, let me enlighten you by telling you all the pros and cons of it and I will give you some pointers at the very end of this video so that you know if ETFs fit you or not. If you are totally new to ETFs, it stands for Exchange Traded Funds which is a type of pool investment security that operates like a mutual fund but is traded on an exchange. You can basically think of it like a basket of stocks that consists of hundreds of stocks like your favourite Apple, Tesla, Nvidia stock and you are technically slicing your money to invest in bits and pieces of each of those companies. It's as simple as that. Now, I believe for most of you, one of your concerns for investment will be fees, right? Did you know that an ETF has a lower cost compared to mutual funds and unit trusts? because it is usually passively managed unlike most of the mutual funds or unit trusts that are actively managed by fund managers. The fee we are talking about here is the expense ratio which reflects how much your mutual fund or your ETF will deduct from you annually to pay for their salary and whatnot. And according to a report, an equity mutual fund has an average expense ratio of 0.47% while the index equity ETFs were only at 0.16% in 2021. And by looking at the average percentages themselves, they might not differ much but if you see from this table, it shows you a simulation of how much difference does it make if you invest $10,000 across different expense ratio ranging from 0.5% up to 2.5% which is actually pretty crazy because mutual funds or unit trust nowadays when you add up all the sales charges, platform fee, management fee, trustee fee etc, it's easily over 2% per annum easily. So let's say we have an initial investment of $10,000 and assuming you get a return of 10% every year, in just one year, the difference of 2.5% versus 0.5% expense ratio is 275 minus 55 which is already at $220. And if you look at year 20, you will see a huge difference at $1,346 and this is just on a scale of $10,000. You will definitely add more into investments over time say 20k, 50k, 100k right? So I don't know for you but for me, this is a huge difference. It's a no-brainer that a lower expense ratio is better because it means more of the return is going to our pockets and not being eaten up by the fees. Why pay 3 times more to unit trust and mutual funds? ETFs are just as good if not better than them. You'll see why in just a minute. Next, diversification. An ETF is a great tool for instant diversification, allow us to gain exposure on a specific class or sector of stocks and not just concentrating on only one stock because as the saying goes, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Basically, there are ETFs for almost every sector, industry, asset class, market cap, country, region, etc. You name it, you got it. For example, purchasing an ETF that tracks a semiconductor's index such as SOXX ETF gives you ownership in a basket of semiconductor stock versus say a TSMC or Nvidia stock. This will help your portfolio to safeguard against volatility and remove the company's specific risk. For example, if there's any unfavorable news of our Nvidia like the restriction of sales for high-performing AI chips to China, then that may result to a $400 million potential sales drop which you can already guess will cause the stocks to tumble. But by holding on to SOXX ETF, you have other stocks to cushion against the fall of Nvidia alone. But of course, this is just one example out of many. In the real world, if there's anything happening to the market leaders like Nvidia or TSMC, then it will still do some collateral damage to the smaller competitors down there, which will then drag down the entire ETF. But the point here is, with diversification, it comes with lesser volatility compared to individual stocks in general. And that brings me to my next point because investors usually measure volatility through something that we call beta which is the rate of fluctuations in price of your investment relative to the market such as the S&P 500 index and if a stock has a beta of above 1.0 that suggests higher volatility than the market and vice versa if its beta is lower than 1.0 then it is less volatile compared to the market. Pretty simple, right? And for most people, they are more comfortable with lower beta or lower volatility for long-term investments as we humans are emotional creatures by nature. And it would not be easy especially for beginners to weather through the stock market roller coaster. 
Plus, ETS provide a more stable return in that regard and is able to prevent a substantial loss of money from some high-risk stocks. And even the S&P 500 index, which is diversified over 500 of the largest US companies, have years where they crash 20 to 30 percent as well. So that is something for you to keep in mind. So if you can relate, picking individual stocks usually has a higher beta than ETFs. Like for example, each individual Fang stock will have a beta of above 1.0. Meanwhile, the S&P 500 ETS beta is relatively lower at around 1.0 and therefore less volatility. The next advantage of investing with an ETF, transparency. As you can access the funds fact sheet easily which is a PDF document updated frequently on their websites, usually on a monthly basis. And with that, you can view its historical performances, fund managers' credentials, expense ratio, dividend distribution policy, portfolio allocation and holdings and so many more. And not only this, the comparison between ETFs can be done easily as they are very easy to understand and there are also websites dedicated to ETFs which are free of charge like ETFDB.com or ETF.com or just ETF.com that you can always go to whenever you need to look up any information on any of the ETFs. While for mutual funds and unit trusts, although they do provide fun fact sheets, their portfolio holdings are only updated quarterly, which can be a little bit slow considering how fast the global market and economy evolves on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's something for you to consider as well. And just a small point to touch on here, although this may not necessarily be applicable to most of us, there are also leveraged ETFs that use financial derivatives like futures or option contracts to amplify the returns of an underlying index such as the S&P 500. And by the word leverage, this means it attempts to double or triple the daily return of the index. But do note that although it is attractive to earn more with leverage ETFs, higher return also equals to higher risk. So if the economy goes into recession or some bad news spring out of nowhere like the pandemic or the Russia-Ukraine war, then your losses will be amplified as well. And also, since leverage ETFs typically have a much higher expense ratio, on top of their volatile price movements. I would say it is not recommendable for long-term investments. And for what it's worth, even when I've been in the stock market for about four years now, I have not even touched leverage ETFs at all. You will do just fine without it. Quick pause, if you want to invest in ETFs across 33 different countries, which include the US, UK, Europe, Australia, Hong Kong, etc., then I would highly recommend you to do it via interactive brokers. Start trading with the most reputable and well-regulated broker. And the best of all, their fee package is easily one of the cheapest among all other stock brokers. Feel free to check them out in the description box and the pinned comment down below. So having said that, for all its advantages, ETF is somewhat of a double-edged sword too. Just like our life, nothing is perfect, right? That's because investing in ETFs or unit trusts or mutual funds also means you're buying into a bunch of winners but also a bunch of losers as well because we do not have any control over the stocks or assets in the particular fund. So if you're avoiding a particular industry or company for whatsoever reason, it does not really provide the same flexibility as compared to investing in an individual stock. And if you want to exclude that particular stock or industry, you cannot do it without eliminating the entire ETF. Unless you mix and match a bunch of smaller ETFs to get the proper exposure you're looking for, but then again, that's kind of hard to do especially for starters. Also, one thing worth taking note is that buying into an ETF also means you don't directly own the underlying asset that the ETF holds, i.e. the stocks. Yes, you still technically own them on a physical replication basis, but you won't have your voting right and the invitation to their shareholders meeting. And that could make or break for some people, especially those that prefer physical events and whatnot. And also, if you're looking to beat the market, then buying an ETF alone may not work because ETFs are most often linked to track the performance of an index, such as the S&P 500. There are of course a combination of certain ETFs that can help you beat the S&P 500's return of around 9-10% to per annum for the past couple of decades. But then again, how easy can that be done for seasoned investors, let alone beginners, is another question as a whole. According to reports, actively managed ETFs constitute only 29% of the total ETFs in 2021, while the remaining 71% being passively managed ETFs. Hence, ETFs generally do not try to outperform the market while investing with individual stocks alone poses a better chance of beating the market provided provided you are great at stock picking. I've compiled this table just to prove my point and as you can see here, the 10 years and 5 years total returns for the top weighted individual stocks in each sector has outperformed their respective S&P 500 sectors by quite a huge margin. 
except for the industrial sector. So if you get your hands on these individual stocks instead of buying the ETFs tracking the S&P 500 sector index, you would probably be laughing when you are sleeping as you have successfully outperformed the market. However, there is a catch of course. Please be reminded that it is not easy to pick the 10 bagger or 100 bagger stocks that can beat the market. It takes a lot of effort on researching and understanding the stocks and market and sometimes maybe a little bit of luck and courage as well. What I have here is what some would call survivorship bias. We only see the survivors and winners. There are of course a ton of individual stocks in the sector that have probably vanished to oblivion over time. And the last disadvantage here is not that material to me but this wouldn't be a complete ETF video without me mentioning it. Some of the ETFs, usually the less popular ones, have a very low liquidity aka trading volume and that's important because with higher liquidity, it means you're able to sell quickly and get back your money or even avoid paying a premium when you trade them. Usually, ETFs that have a smaller market cap or trade at a less popular stock exchange can have a lower trading volume relative to the popular ones, hence the lower liquidity. So you need to make sure that the ETF you're interested in is liquid by studying its spreads first before investing. Spread is essentially the difference between the bid, which is the buy, and the ask sell price for a particular stock or ETF. Say for example, you want to sell ETF A for $10, your friend wants to buy it for $12, so the spread between them would be $2. There's no fixed range of spreads indicating whether the spreads are wide or tight, but generally the tighter or smaller the spreads are, the better it is. And you can find them in the form of popular index ETFs such as the SPY, IVV, VOO, QQQ, which has average spread at about 0.01%, which is very, very tight. And also, some ETFs might have tracking errors that will increase your cost of buying and selling them too. What do I mean by this? Well, ETF managers are supposed to keep the fund's performance in line with the indexes they are tracking right. But this is not as easy as it sounds because the share price and asset weighting changes every second when the market is trading and the ETF managers have to readjust their weightage consistently over time and these trades cost time and money to execute and add on time zone difference and technical difficulties and various cost cutting measures, you end up having tracking errors. But to be fair to them, tracking errors are generally very small and those large and widely held ETFs usually have very minimal tracking errors to the point that they are negligible in the large scale of things. And of course, when you compare buying ETFs with stocks, there will be more costs incurred such as the expense ratio mentioned previously. Meanwhile, buying into individual stocks do not have such fees as it is not managed by anyone. But like I've said, this is not so much of a big problem in my opinion because there are ETFs with lower expense ratio going as low as 0.03% per annum. So it's practically as good as free. So bottom line, should you invest in ETFs? Well, my answer is, if you have to ask, then there is a high chance it will be a yes. If you are a beginner looking to start investing and get a little bit of exposure towards the market volatility, or you have very little time to spend on investment research and don't mind a diversified portfolio that allows you to sleep in peace at night, then ETS would probably suit you at this point in time. Warren Buffett himself also has recommended investing in low-cost S&P 500 index funds. So if the greatest investor in the world is saying that, how wrong can you go with them, right? But of course, if you are someone who enjoys having more control over your investment portfolio or you enjoy researching and want to pick your own stock, then you can always choose to invest in individual stocks for the potentially higher returns. But, but, if you still have trouble deciding, then I say, Put Canola stocks. Just include both in your portfolio and adjust as you go over time because your investment goal and risk appetite changes as life progresses. But just remember to always, always do your research first before investing in anything. And if you'd like to learn more about how to research an ETF, I have this video just for you. So click on to that and I will see you over there.